Um, Adair asked me to, to mention and discuss just very briefly the images in a sketchbook that were donated to the El Paso Museum of Art by a group of friends in 1998. And um, that book was created in 1942. And Tom's record of work confirms that it was done sometime between August 17th and October 21st of that year. That sketchbook is on exhibit in the Tom Lee Gallery. When you first walk into our galleries off to the right hand side, and of course we can't have the public flip through those books. Um, but what we do have right next to it is a laminated um, copy of every one of the images in the sketchbook that you could peruse. But if you come and visit us um, once a week or once every 10 days, we're going to be flipping each one of those sketches um, so that you have a chance to, to see every one of them. But tonight, you'll see them all in reproduction. I quote from Tom, very few serious artists have ever been in places where they are able to observe battles firsthand, um, said Tom at the age of 77, who was one of the first painters life dispatched to the front in 1941. An eyewitness to combat in North Atlantic and Pacific and on the Solomon Islands, Lee spent five years graphically recording the moods, colors, textures um, of the war-scarred landscape. Quote, most paintings, most paintings of battles are done from the recordings of other people, from stories or photographs, said Lee, who was engaged by life after the then managing editor Dan Longwell had seen Lee's illustrations in the Saturday Evening Post. Um, again, another relationship we have here with Norman Rockwell. Um, quote, I wanted to make a record of what war looked like. What appealed to me most was that I could get to all the, all the theaters of war and report to the nation what I saw. In depicting a war that spared its victims little, Lee spared life readers euphemisms. His gripping portraits, painted from rough sketches made in foxholes or aboard destroyers, conveyed a vivid, often overwhelming sense of time and place. And Lee noted, quote, you see things with greater clarity when the adrenaline is flowing and you're frightened. I don't know if it's an accurate kind of sharpness, but it hits you deeper and stronger. Combat artist Tom Lee spent 66 days on board the USS Hornet during the Guadalcanal campaign. And that's primarily where these sketches were done. Lee was on assignment for Life magazine when this portrait that you're looking at, Lieutenant L.C. Silver Everson, was sketched. Lee left the ship on October 21st, just missing the Battle of Santa Cruz. Based on the reports of this battle, Lee painted this work for Life magazine. I apologize for the quality of this image, but it was the only one that I could find easily. Um, Tom used that sketch, Portrait of a Fighter, the portrait of Lieutenant L.C. Silver Emerson, um, for this painting that's now in the U.S. Army Center of Military History. Um, the painting was then later used for Life magazine. I have a better image that I found. This painting in detail was later found um, uh, or used for the cover of the Naval History from April of 1995. So I, for a better comparison, I'll leave that out. On September 15, 1942, the Hornet and Wasp covered the transports taking the 7th Marines to reinforce Guadalcanal. There, Lee flew with and got to know many of the pilots, one of whom was L.C. Emerson. F4F fighter pilot survived the sinking of the Hornet only to be lost north of Guadalcanal several months later. Lee said, quote, he was a ladies man ashore. I bet I got a dozen letters from girlfriends after he was lost. I went, uh, I went to see his mother up in Plymouth Mast after he was killed. I think all of us grew personally to hate Japs, and I don't think any Marine I met hated them worse than Silver Emerson did. He'd come back with his tongue all bloody from biting the in the flight and Lee painted him that way for life magazine. This work is called General Quarters. All hands man your battle stations. Lee headed into war armed with only a trench knife, a cigar box containing watercolors, lead pencils, rag notebooks and Indian ink, wrapped in a pair of socks. He made only brief notes about the light and the color of his subjects, which during interludes he would translate into sketches and later still into oil paintings. This is, um, Lee being very true to his own words, and it's amazing to see the artist's fidelity to his own drawing as well as to his own reassuring notes. Now, not all of Lee's sketches in this sketchbook were used for life or were reproduced into paintings. Um, some were generated, though, for life. This watercolor, um, standby to repel attack, 
1942 is um, actually located in the Army Center for Military History in Fort Belvoir, Virginia. This sketch, also in the um, book, was later used for a painting, Clear the Flight Deck, 1942. Fantasma de Guerra, Spanish for Ghost of War, refers not to the ships in the painting, but to the unseen but ever-present threat of torpedoes from Japanese submarines. The same vessel um, that's focused on here is found in another pencil and watercolor on paper in our collection, and another work by Lee of the same subject um, is in an oil on canvas uh, from 1942, also in the Army Center for Military History. To capture this in color, the artist has written notes along the margins. Bruce pointed some of these out before, but I love them. I'm going to share them with you because they sound like poetry. Plains, dark slate blue. Sky, cobalt and turquoise. Indigo brilliant, emerald lighting, deepening to viridian, to middle oxide of chromium darkening. I mean, isn't that beautiful? I mean, it could be a poem, right? Ships grim gray. Purple cobalt swatches, and above that, which I love, cloud and evil white. You know, only Tom would know what that is. No idea what that color is. Um, this drawing is a submarine or a periscope. You can see all of the notes, less dramatic and poetic, but um, things like um, metal, um, stone gray, black, and each one of these points to an area um, of the submarine. Warming up for Dawn Patrol, um, daylight study of forms for the painting. I'm going to read to you some of these because, again, they're beautiful. Sky, early clouds touched with first light of sun. The sea, deep purple like black with lights reflecting down clouds. Deck, somewhat lighter than sea. Gray, blue, purple. Island structure, dim gray blues with purplish black shadows. Planes catching lights from sky. And two more in the sketchbook to share with you. Hangar deck, the unsung heroes. And lastly, one of those beautiful portraits that Bruce had spoken so um, eloquently about. Subskipper R. R. McGregor, of whom I was not able to find much information, and actually no information on him at all. But thank you all so much again for being here, and thank the Tom Lee Institute for putting together such a